credits, the incentive heavy counties realized no appreciable long term gains in either gross or net job creation. This is largely because the success rate of companies is highly volatile. volatile. Some 96% of companies fail within 10 years, taking jobs and capital down with them like a sinking ship. Incentive programs fail because they do not account for the fact that firms and the returns they are bidding on are highly volatile and prone to failure. Policymakers should not trust any job creation projects from a firm seeking incentives or a consultant enough to risk public money in order to just potentially win those benefits. And I have a question I would like somebody, after all the public hearing is done, to please explain. Item number three says, the expected increased estimated tax market value of the site without the use of tax increment is $13,428. For a 52 plus acre parcel, Folks, that's $250 an acre. How can that po be possible? This city is saying... Time's up. Thank you very much. Anyone else wish to speak? Third and final call. Anyone else wish to speak? 750, we'll close the public hearing. There is no action on this item tonight. Okay, uh, any comments or questions by the uh, EDA? I'm, I'd like to make a couple comments. Uh, first of all, I did tour that site more than once. Um, and other people in the audience have, and I did not smell any strong odors on the inside, much less on the outside when we drove up. I wasn't even sure I was in the right place. Um, second of all, job creation, uh, that we've done for ABS, work with them. Um, there's other communities looking for these for these businesses. You look at what we did with Wabash, how many jobs we created, created there. We worked with Airborne. Uh, we have brought so much business to this, to this community that we had to work for. And most, if not all of it, is built on lands that, on land that has not generated uh, property tax for us because it's been, this is school land, uh, so we haven't been generating tax off of that, and most of it has been on city land, which we generated. So why let it sit empty for another 10, 20 years and get nothing for it when we can do TIF or whatever we're doing for 10 years, and then after that we'll be drawing full uh, a property tax value. We're bringing in good businesses and I, I don't like the term corporate welfare because you tell those hundred people at Wabash that we shouldn't do this. You tell the 75 or whatever they have at Airborne we shouldn't do this. You tell these people that are going to be coming here working for Barrett that we shouldn't do this. This is good jobs and good benefits and a great community and that's how we get to Anybody else have a comment? I'll echo that. I, I think I think this is one of the, I've been at the EDA, I don't know how many years it is now, it's quite a few. This is the best deal I've seen in my whole term on the EDA. Carol's done a wonderful job on this. Uh, I don't see how we could turn this down. It would be crazy. It absolutely would be crazy. That's all I got. Anything else? Comments from the council? I agree, I support it. I think it's a bit of a boom for this town. We need jobs. We need new businesses. My understanding is that the, the, the 10 years of TIF, the, and correct me if I'm wrong, <coughs> but those, the taxes, the property taxes that come to the city will be used to pay for that property. And then after that, what's the tax on a 10 million, how many, how many million dollar building is this, facility is this? Ten. Ten. What, are, what are the property taxes on the $10 million facility? After 10 years, that's going to come to the city. If we don't do this, it's likely that this wonderful company that offers such great wages and such an excellent benefits package will go elsewhere. We need these jobs here in the falls. So we, we really do need to do this. I, I'm, I'm going to add that 
if Carol hadn't done, put this together, we probably wouldn't have gotten this company. It probably would have gone to Brainerd or something else. This is a very competitive market for businesses like this. We have to fight tooth and nail to get these heads of companies to come here. I don't think people understand the free market that's out there and how many possibilities there are for companies like this to go other places. So, yes, I think we have to do this, absolutely. Any other comments? We just, we, it wasn't discussed this time, but I think it was at the last meeting. You, your organization sponsors 100% the health care coverage for the employees, correct? Correct, yeah. We pay and nobody else gets a deal like that. I, I, I don't. It's, it's also a low deductible uh, medical insurance that is as good as any hospitals or clinics. So it's, it's certainly not the cheapest plan that we could choose for our employees. I just, I, I, I believe we need options, <coughs> jobs for people to stay here. I don't, I'd like to see the statistics. I don't know. Maybe uh, Mark Derby knows what percentage of our high school graduates we lose out of this community every single year. And I and I just I want people to stick around and raise their family. It, it, it's more than just looking the, the myopic view of that particular building. It also includes uh, them buying homes, paying property taxes on nicer homes, and, and the water utilities. It, it, it's more than just this building. It's a hundred people's livelihoods, you know, and if it's a good living, and they're going to live here, and they're going to build here, just like, just like, like you said, and they're going to spend their money here, and it's, this money is going to stay in the community. Thank you for choosing the ball. Thank you, and a big thanks to Carol. Obviously, uh, you're very correct with that. Obviously, we <clears throat> before we. We even looked at Little Falls when, when Carol came into the picture. Obviously, we <coughs> had a little inkling was to look at Brainerd because that's where we're from. That's the only place that we've ever manufactured. Um, and, and obviously, yes, they were very interested. And we, we could have gotten the same type of package from Brainerd as well as communities around St. Cloud. But Carol brought so much to the table. We met you know, the mayor and, and the rest of the team from Little Falls. And uh, it just felt like the right opportunity. And, and once that ball started rolling, we basically stopped uh, searching for another site. It just it felt like the right place for us, obviously. Not that it's not local to us. We're you know, south of town brainers, but um, it, it, it really we felt, it felt like it's the right opportunity. It's the right place to be. More comments from the Any If not, I entertain it. I need a motion to adjourn. So moved. Second. We have a motion and a second. <coughs> All in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Both same sign. Motion carries. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> I'm sorry, I didn't know the answer, but since Knopfler retired, we've been re retaining a lot more. <laughs> Resolution 2018-87, Tax Increment Financing, District Number 41. Adopt. So, Lori, or John? Well, again, Council President, this is the, the second public hearing that we'll have tonight, so we need to call for the public hearing. 759, we'll call the public hearing order.
subscribe? Uh, yes, uh, this is for the, the tax in increment financing district for the project that will encompass um, the property that is of interest um, for Bear Pet Foods. Uh, this is primarily school district property. There will be some additional areas for roadway improvements that, that are included as well in this district. Um, and we have Jason Marie here from David Jones Associates to go through uh, the the finer details of this. If the project were not to be successful and not move forward, we would just not certify the district. So at this time, it's, it, if you would have the resolution, if the resolution is passed, the district would be able to be established. We don't have to certify the district to implement the, the, the TIP financing on that. So it's, not, it's something that still, if there's contingency or concern that if the project were to move forward, um, at this time we're not anticipating that um, we're just at a, at a point where other pieces need to fall into place as well such as being a, a, a critical component of that so with that i'll turn it over to, to jason to, to give some more background on the thanks john uh, mr president mr mayor members of the council tonight you're you're holding this public hearing to debate the merits of establishing tax increment financing district number 41. this is an economic development tip district which requires uh main requirement is going to define that there's jobs and wage creation as part of it. Um, as disclosed earlier, you've heard the, the project scope, the number of job potential for this project. And so we clearly uh, believe this will, will certainly meet that the merits of the law. Uh, as part of the economic development TIF district, it is a nine year increment. Um, the increment starts the first year full value is anticipated uh, based on the current construction uh, uh, timeline that's been provided. We're looking at 2021, 2022 being the first year of estimated increment to be collected. Um, as part of this TIP district, it is a one parcel TIP district as uh, John indicated. We are encompassing the parcel currently owned by the school district along with uh, citing some, some uh, uh, additional roads adjacent to the property for potential improvement. Uh, as we currently speak today, uh, we noted in the business subsidy hearing that uh, potential capital costs through this TIF district is about 1.3 million, 1,315,000 uh, as part of this TIF district. Uh, the potential for use of that currently, there's two obligations being discussed. One is the to reimburse the school district for the uh, property using increment as it's collected to reimburse the school district over time over those nine years. And then the, the second obligation is potentially uh, pay for an outstanding assessment that currently lies in the property. So uh, as we speak today, those are the uh, two obligations that potentially would come from this TIF district. And again, as we move forward, if this project uh, does commence, we will certainly be back in front of the council with a formal business uh, development, business subsidy agreement that outlines these obligations in, in greater detail. So. With that, Mr. President, Mayor, and the council members, I'll pause uh, my comments on the TIF district, you know, or if you have any questions, I can answer them at this time too. But I can pause and let, let the public hearing come out. Any questions? Okay, thank you. This time, we'll open up for public comment. Anyone from the public wish to speak? Go ahead, Ron. Robin Hansel, 807 First Street Southeast. It's important for the taxpayers in the city to know that the school district tried vigorously to get rid of the tax, the assessments on the property. There will be more about that in the future. I oppose this TIF district financing. How the excess TIF program performed matters because home and business owners pay a higher share of property taxes when money is diverted to building projects, according to critics of such incentives. If it were true that no real estate appreciation would have occurred in the TIF district but for the TIF activities overlying governments, such as school districts and other special districts, would get the same amount of property tax revenue that they would have received without the TIF district. Unfortunately, these rules set up potentially perverse incentives by allowing cities to claim property tax revenue that might not 
have received the in the absence of the TIF. In TIF, if TIF district expenditures are not documented in detail, observers may also suspect misuse of funds such as money funneled to political allies, in particular egregious cases. TIF can facilitate unproductive fiscal competition between neighboring jurisdictions, business tax incentives in general, and TIF in particular are vulnerable to overuse if potential beneficiaries can stimulate or a virtual or actual bidding war among competing governments. A business that is considering expansion or relocation may use the existence of tax incentive programs to obtain benefits or threaten to leave to obtain more, even when the location would be to the business's most profitable option, even without the benefits. Economic theory suggests that under some conditions, such negotiations can reduce economic efficiency Recent empirical evidence shows up, that Robin, business you. tax incentives in general are not well targeted and often do little to stimulate economic growth. Anyone else from the public wish to speak? Anyone else from the public wish to speak? Say none, Robin, go ahead. Unfortunately, the design of TIF in many states makes it vulnerable to exploitation by cities, which can obtain revenues that otherwise would have gone to overlying governments, especially school districts. Within individual states and cities, most often TIF has been used in areas that were already moderately successful, and it has done little to stimulate growth in the most depressed areas. Business subsidies do not generate sustained economic growth. One reason is that subsidies are ultimately funded by higher taxes, which displace private sector investment. Another reason is that areas which become dependent on subsidies can lose their competitive edge and stagnate, just as individuals on welfare tend to stagnate. A better way for distressed regions to spur growth is to reform state and local tax and regulatory policies to encourage entrepreneurship and private investment. The EDA does not have any special abilities to revive growth that the states and private sector, sector do not have. The federal funding of industrial parks, road projects, and other activities through the EDA just adds federal bureaucracy. The EDA also pits jurisdictions against one another in a zero-sum game when subsidies induce businesses to in invest in some locations other over others. Congress should abolish the EDA. The author also examines additional academic literature about the impact of TIF on school districts and other potential unintended side effects. The report concludes that although the results are mixed, TIF often fails to meet its primary goal to increase real estate development and other economic growth. And as my sign says tonight, do the right thing. There's a lot of empirical evidence to show that economic grants of any type do not work, do not benefit the taxpayer. If you doubt me, do your own research. Time's up. Thank you. Believe me, we'll do the right thing. Third final call. Anyone else wish to speak? Story 601 7th Avenue, Southwest Little Falls. Um, <clears throat> I'm kind of just neutral on this because there's a few things that I'm not quite sure of. I drive through town and we've got help wanted signs at Falls Fab, out at the old ethanol plant. Airborne has something in the paper all the time. How, how are we helping the people in our community already to supply them with? good workers and, and so they can maximize their ability to manufacture goods to bring people in the town here uh, when they're already paying their their fair you know in 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 their taxes and stuff um, like I say I'm not against this I'm not for it either I need I'm looking for some answers on how do we how, how do we fill the positions that the current people within our city 
need help with workers along with you know are they gonna you know if this if they come into town are they gonna are they gonna take workers from these other uh, facilities and then now that now that's gonna decrease their ability to make product for their customers I guess I just have, I have something I, I would like to answer Anyone else wish to speak? Hearing none, 810, we'll close the public hearing. Council discussion? Action for discussion? You looking for a motion? Absolutely. Okay, I, I move, move we adopt uh, resolution 2018-87. Second. Second. Got a motion by Councilmember Hanson, second by Councilmember Kanawha on resolution number 2018-87. Discussion? Hearing none, resolution call roll. Burkhoff? Yes. Lundberg? Yes. Zilka? Yes. Hampler? Yes. Kanawha? Yes. Hanson? Yes. Carries. On a uh, lighting snow truck box and snow removal equipment, tow master truck equipment, public works, correct? Yeah, this is the essentially the second half of the um, so your new power truck that we're looking at acquiring. If you recall back in March, we purchased the chassis uh, of the power truck. Now we're looking at fitting, outfitting the uh, the chassis with the snow removal equipment. So we've got a price from tow master in the amount of one hundred six thousand nine hundred ninety four dollars for the tax title license. Uh, that we're asking the council to approve this evening. It is included in our 2019 budget, um, but we'd like to get this ordered as soon as possible so that we can get it uh, in the works to get, get created. What's the wish of the council? I move to award. Second. Got a motion by Council Member Lundberg, second by Alderman Hercock. <coughs> to award the bid. Any discussion? Uh, really quick, Mr. President. Did we get the. Is this state bid or. This is not state bid. Okay. And if I read correctly, the blades are coming from here? That is correct, yeah. Any other discussion? Hearing none, all in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed, same sign. Motion carries. Old business resolution 2018-81, accept feasibility report and call for public hearings, surface and utility improvements, block 22, water and power company number two. Right. Yeah, this evening in front of you, we've got the feasibility report for the petition project. If you recall, there was a little over 35% that petition to have uh, two avenues and one alley, uh, two blocks of the, of the avenue and one alley to be paved. Um, if you look at page 38, it gives you a picture of kind of where that's at. It's in between 9th and 10th Street on the southwest side of town on 7th and 8th Avenue. Um, so this evening, we are asking the town council to uh, call for the public hearing for that on January 22nd at uh, 7.30 here in the council chambers. What's the wish of the council? We're just calling for a public hearing. Yep, correct. Second. Got a motion by Councilmember Lundberg, second by Councilmember Hansen to approve resolution 2018-81. Any discussion? Hearing none, resolution call or roll please. Lundberg? Yes. Zilka? Yes. Ampler? Yes. Knopla? Yes. Hansen? Yes. Kirkhoff? Yes. Carries. New business. Amend City Council motion of March 19, 2018. Follow truck chassis nuts truck approved yeah so when we approved the purchase of the plow chassis for our new plow truck back in march um i didn't have on the motion to include the tax title license so the price is the same on it it's just it includes the tax title license on the uh on the piece of equipment so if we could amend that motion to include that i would appreciate it Mr. the council i'll make a motion to amend second Got a motion by Mayor Zilka, a second by Alderman Hercock to approve and amend. Any discussion? Uh, I have a simple question. Go ahead. Okay. Why are we not tax exempt from something like this? We are on everything but vehicles, motor vehicles, licensed motorized vehicles. So six and a half percent sales tax and then the title fee. Yeah, license, yeah. We don't pay the full license, we pay a reduced tax-exempt plate license, but we do have to pay the sales tax. Thank you. Any other discussion? 
Hearing none, all in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 All those saying sign. Motion carries. Housing Redevelopment Authority recommendation, ordinance number 13, seven series, sale of property. Adam and Roxanne Jelinski, accept, introduce, Lori. Um, yes, Adam and Roxanne Jelinski have um, made an offer to purchase some property that's adjacent to their property um, on Northwest Little Falls. Um, there is a map included with the purchase agreement. They did offer $5,000 for the property and, and um, the map that's included is incorrect. Um, they did make an offer of $5,000 on the property and the HRA did have a public hearing and is approving or recommending the sale of the property. Um, it is a, a triangular piece of property um, that is directly north of the property they own that butts the railroad. Um, it's not really a buildable site. Uh, city owns it and it's, it's sitting there so it makes no sense for us to have that property. We have a use for it. Um, and, and it is, Makes sense to sell it um, and get some tax revenue off of it. And I apologize if the map is the incorrect map. I'm seeing that John is trying to bring it up. So. Is that our last meeting? Yeah, it was. I think we talked it, about it. It was. We, we, um, we had it, I think, two meetings ago. We took it off the agenda um, through the HRA meeting to make the recommendation, and they weren't able to let yeah, it. We did see the map time. then. Yeah. What, what are the different ramifications coming from HRA, not just the city? Because I'm not aware of what was talked about at those meetings. Um, if it was just straight up city owned property, then I'd be questioning this. Sure looks like a sweetheart deal. Looks like a buildable lot to me. I mean, it's a full block long. I understand it's triangle shape, but it goes all the way past a, what I'm assuming is a paper alley. Correct. It's, it's not quite a full block long, if I remember correctly. Um, and I did talk to Ben, and it is a buildable lot, but it's only at 70% of what the required lot size is. Because of the, you know, the back is very narrow, and it's based on square footage, not on just the road, what's on the road right away. Is that an abandoned railroad track? Yes. Yeah. And I look, click on that parcel ending and it looks like 8,000? 8, 8, yeah, see, there's an abandoned track. Yeah. Yes, they own that property as well. Right. Yeah, and I think if you click on the report showing the property tax, it's like $48 a year. So uh, we can say we're going to get it on the tax rolls, but it isn't going to amount to anything. Mm -hmm. Are they amount to nothing? No. Well, you can't I know we're building a lot, so. And they'll maintain it then if they own it. Correct. Right. Right. Yeah, $48 a year, so on the tax rolls, and then we're getting roughly a third of that. sense to sell it to them, but to me the price is kind of low. How does that compare to the square footage on other ones we've sold to people looking to build a house for like fifteen, sixteen thousand dollars? Right, it is it is less, but again it's it's it is considered a buildable lot, but it's only at seventy percent of um of and I forget exactly what Ben told me, but he said it's like if you do the measurements and do the setbacks, it's at 70% of what a normal lot would be. Well, it's a non-conforming lot. Correct? That's it's not a 100% conforming lot to build on, and that's what we're trying to eliminate. We're buying parcels of the land and combining with the other ones to make buildable lots. So, Well, I'll have to take your word for it that it's not a buildable lot, but it sure looks like it should be large enough. I mean, I think the challenge comes in as far as the, the front footage of that particular lot. That's what, what is the issue. I mean, it's, it's bigger than the one their house is on. Because the front footage on the bottom, it, it only butts it right here. And that's, that's the problem with that particular lot. We have front footage requirements on it, um, and that's where it comes into play. So we, you'd have to 
acquire right away put a road in there because there is no road through there right the road the, turns the road it, turns it, yeah it's yeah. l-shaped yeah. there Discussion? We're going to have a motion to introduce. So moved. It's been introduced by Mayor Zoka. Uh, purchase agreement, Independent School District 482, 18th Street, Northeast. Approved. Done. So this is the this is the purchase agreement that we have. Uh, with the school district on the property that is intended for the development for Barrett Pet Foods, as I uh, described in the work session, if this, um, if something were to happen with this, with this project, the development weren't to, weren't successful, we weren't able to move forward. The purchase agreement is contingent upon all the pieces of the development coming together. So we're not we're not stuck with the property if if we can't develop it. So this is it is strictly contingent upon. Uh, everything working on in, in the tip district uh, would be utilized to over time as those increment dollars were collected that would be used to, to pay off for pay the back to school for the for price of land. What's the wish of the council? Make a motion to approve. Second. And a motion by Alvin Hercock, second by Councilmember Knopla to approve the purchase agreement with the school. Discussion? Hearing none, all in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed, same sign. Motion carries. Resolution 2018-83, establish a pay increase for Board of Equalization. Adopt. John? Yes, this is to increase from $10 to $15. The last uh, salary increase for the Board of Equalization was in 1994. Um, this board meets typically once per year. Uh, it is comprised of the council president, the mayor, and myself. Um, I am not compensated by this resolution as it's during my normal working hours. So this is, uh, it's very small, uh, very minimal impact to the, the budget. Thank you. Thank you. So what should the council on resolution 2018-83? Make a motion to adopt. Second. Got a motion by Alderman Hercock, second by Councilmember Hansen to approve resolution 2018-83. Discussion? Do I need to abstain from that over here? I was just going to say we maybe should table this because both Greg and Jeremy are going to have to abstain. The Council President I should have to abstain because that's not going to be my position coming forward to for increase. Very true. Very true. So, it's yes. It's not effective until 2019. 2019, yes. Any other discussion? Hearing okay, none, resolution, call a roll. Zilka? Abstain. Ampler? Yes. Kanakla? Yes. Hansen? Yes. Burkhoff? Yes. Lundberg? Yes. Carries. Resolution 2018-84, established volunteer firefighter salary. Adopt, John? Again, this is, uh, we talked about this in the budget um, timeline. We did some analysis looking at other uh, other of our paid on-call fire departments in our neighboring areas. Um, we do call us, call them volunteers, but technically they are paid.